Welcome everyone to our Biblical Treasure series. Today we're going to be talking to Emma Hattersley. Thank you, Emma, for joining us. And I would like to ask you a few questions, Emma. I know most people in our church and people that join us um, probably know you or have known you for a long time, but there are also people that might not know you very well. So I'm going to ask you a few questions before we go into looking at a passage in the Bible. So tell us about your family, Emma. So I live with um, my mum and my dad, Jane and Andy. Um, I have two younger siblings, Grace and Jacob, and um, we also have a lovely dog, Petra, who we got last year, and is definitely a yeah, highlight of all lockdowns, but yeah. Oh, she is lovely. If you haven't met Petra yet, I'm sure one day you will. <laughs> she is adorable. Yeah. Uh, if you're not living in Angmoy with your parents, Emma, tell us what, what do you do? So I study physics with astrophysics um, at the University of Manchester. So I lived in halls last year, um, but this year on and off. Um, so uh, hopefully soon. Um, and at the beginning of the year, I live in um, a place near the Curry Mile with uh, my friends Amir, Joe and Moon. Lovely. Um, and the last question, tell us what is your favourite colour? So it always used to be purple, it kind of still is purple, but I have also just painted my room green, um, so maybe dark green, I find it very soothing, yeah. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> um, so Emma, last year, um, during lockdown, this whole year has been quite different for everyone, and quite overwhelming at times actually. So tell us when, when you feel overwhelmed, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just doing lockdown, but times in your life where you felt overwhelmed, where do you go to in the Bible to find hope? Yeah, I think when you asked me to do this interview, I was thinking about this, I was thinking if I was to drop my Bible, where would it fall open? Where are the bits that I've read so much that are so well thumbed that the pages just flip there? Um, and there are quite a few options, but I think for me, the passage I turn to most often um, is actually in Revelation, which is quite a difficult book to understand. I'll be honest, I haven't read all of it, um, but this particular passage I just find so encouraging. Um, and it's chapter 21, um, verses three and four. And it says, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, um, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And I think... If I'm reflecting on why this passage is so important to me, I think it's kind of because of my natural state of being. I'm quite an anxious person. Um, before lockdown, lockdown obviously didn't help. Um, but yeah, in general, day-to-day um, -day things can occasionally feel quite terrifying. Thankfully, not as much as they used to, but it still happens sometimes. And I think what my brain is always searching for is, to know for certain that everything will be okay, that maybe I can organize my life in such a way, maybe I can plan in such a way that everything will be okay. And unfortunately, when people say that to me, like they do quite often um, on earth, that's kind of a little bit of a shallow phrase because we can't know that everything will be okay. I think lockdown revealed to a lot of people um, that everything will not always be okay. Um, but this passage reminds me that as a Christian, I can know for certain that ultimately everything will be okay and it will be better than okay. It will be perfect because there will be the old order of things will have passed away um, and all the unhappiness of this life will have gone. And I think for me, I also find this passage helpful because it kind of helps me to draw that tricky line between what is happiness and what is joy um, because I think I often felt quite guilty particularly if there was no particular reason for me to be feeling anxious or upset 
for not feeling happy. I think there's a stereotype that Christians are meant to be kind of chirpy and we go and sing really loudly and everything's great. Um, and sometimes we're like that and that's fantastic, but sometimes we're not and actually that's okay. Um, we are called to be joyful. We can't always choose to be happy, but we can choose to be joyful. Um, and joy for me is summed up in this passage. It's, it's holding on to this ultimate hope that the passage talks about that actually one day um, we will have perfection, we will have eternity with God. Um, and yeah, I think for me, particularly this year, when and last year, just the pandemic in general, where everything was so uncertain, um, I'd just come to uni pretty much, like I was about to semester in and I had to pack my entire life into my dad's car again and drive back home with like 48 hours notice. I had to do that again for the last lockdown. Um, and just in general, everything was uncertain. Everything was overwhelming. Um, and then I lost my granddad and everything was awful and everything was sad. Um, but this passage, I just turned to again and again because I just needed that reminder that one day it wouldn't be like this and that God heard my crying and he, he acknowledged it, but he also told me that one day it wouldn't be there through this passage, that he would wipe every tear from my eye and he would take away the death and he would take away the mourning and he would take away the pain. And I don't think I could have, yeah, persevered as I did without this passage. Oh, thank you so much, Emma. It's, it's such a lovely reminder for all of us that Yes, we do have our troubles here, but one day, isn't that going to be wonderful that our tears will be wiped away, everything will be made new. So thank you for sharing this wonderful uh, passage with us, this uh, treasure from God's word. And I just pray that you will be blessed in all your endeavors. So, so for those of you that were listening to us, I'm just going to give you the reference again. It's a Revelation chapter 21, verses three and four. Thank you so much, Emma, for being with us today. And we hope that you will have a blessed head, rest of the time here with your family. And for those of you watching, we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for having me.